Finally, a kid's movie that proves the age-old adage that a child's best friend is a seven-foot-tall, Scottish, scary-looking fucking bear. We saw Gooby, so you know what that means. A nigga grow a baby in his belly, rock a rhinestone vest while ripping just into Kelly. Or maybe see a burlesque show with Nick Crow and take a boat with speed to hit and cruise control. J Man, Big Paul, and the beautiful June. Gonna take you from the goob all the way to the room. Ran the games of Street Fighter, help to blow off steam. Just a sucker punch the odd life of Timothy Green. Shock Nato to Bird Demic, how we staying alive. They call it in the badass, and he's on the line. Cranking 88 minutes, cause they cool as ice. Cause a bad Jim Varney looks Looking kind and nice. Paul and June getting literal. Jason is getting laid. June is making sure all the monkey shots getting paid. They judge a bunch of movies while they're making the grade. Here's a real question for you. How did this get made? <laughs> That's a good look, Haru. What's that smell? <laughs> Yuki. Hello, people of Earth, and welcome to How Did This Get Made? Matinee Monday a video series in which we look back at classic How Did This Get Made episodes and then put them back in the stream for free for you. And Gooby is one of my favorite episodes. I mean, we really break it all down in this one. Um, it's a Canadian movie, and we brought on our Canadian expert. That's right, Nathan Fielder, star, creator, director of the rehearsal, uh, comes on to help try to make sense of a movie that really makes no sense. Uh, clearly, this movie was funded by Canada and they needed to have Canadian actors in it, which is why Eugene Levy appears in the movie. And it feels like he appears uh, at gunpoint in this film. Uh, he does not want to be there. His name is Nerdlinger. Now, that's all okay with June because June loves Gooby's ass. I mean, she can't get enough of that goob ass. Uh, Robbie Coltrane, Haggard from Harry Potter, is the voice of this monstrous creature who lives out in a kid's backyard. I mean, this movie has, I mean, if you want to talk about Drop Dead Fred, this movie has a lot of similarities. The parents here are assholes. There are not imaginary friends, but they are hoonies. Uh, that's the other weird blue monsters. They don't refer to Halloween as Halloween. They just call it October 31st as if like Halloween was a trademarked word. Um, and this movie is just a generally creepy kid creature film. I mean, just like Mac and me, just like <laughs> Drop Dead Fred, although she's an adult in that, uh, this movie makes you feel that you should be watching your children's films a little bit more closely. Here, take a listen. Now, this is a, a Canadian movie. I realized that midway through when I saw the Captain Crunch was Nathan. Captain <laughs> Crunchy. Nathan. Yeah, so... I didn't know anything about this going in. And Nathan, then can there you, were two you're from kind of bombshells I saw when I Googled <laughs> it after that it was made in Canada. And the thing that blew me away the most was that it was made in 2009. Yes. I honestly thought this oh, was yeah. made in like 1985. Yeah, yeah it the is. The way it looked. And because there's this issue where like... There's this one scene, too, where it's a big plot point, but the guy, the dad has to go at some point, leave the house, and he says to the mom, like, you have to stay here in case the police call. Yeah. Implying that, like, cell phones That's don't what, exist. I, I wrote that down, too. And yet, Gooby has a cell phone because Gooby calls, <laughs> yeah. Gooby uses the kid Willie's cell phone to call the yes. dad. The, the, the no. Ten-year-old. Like, how old's that kid? Yeah, like, he's, like, ten or eleven years old. Yeah, he has a cell phone. <laughs> But yes. the mom, but the mom does, does it, <laughs> and the mom doesn't even object. Oh, you know, like and the it's... son's missing, and he's like, "I'm going. I'm not saying where." Well, the weirdest thing about that scene too is that she's like, she's very upset, and he's like, "Don't worry. I've spoken to the police. They've assured me that they will call as oh, soon as they know that anything." That was the best, yeah. Which is like, he's not saying, "Don't worry. Everything's going to be okay." Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> he's just like they've told me they'll call. And then he's like, "I got to go out for a minute," and she's like, "Where are you going?" And he does. He goes. You stay here. <laughs> He's like really emphatic about it. They and that's what I wrote in my notes. I was like, their marriage is terrible. <laughs> I want to. I want this is back to my question about Canada. And this is yeah. I, I. I don't mean to be naive about this, but but you're from Canada, so you better know. Yeah. Well, he, I mean, I mean something else about this movie. Yeah. The budget was six point five million dollars. I yes. saw and. Canadian films are funded usually, if not entirely, a large percentage of them with taxpayer money. Yeah. So this 
film <laughs> was made with taxpayer money. Do you want to hear the so saddest? So you were there in Canada in 2009 and uh, paid for this. I w- yes, I, I did Your pay tax taxes dollars. there in 2009. So you're one of the backers of this movie. <laughs> yes. this you is have a real conflict investor? with the original <laughs> conflict. Indirectly, I, yes, I invested in That's, this movie. Because no. I didn't see your name enlisted in the producers. <laughs> we don't get credits for it. We you just don't. support the art. You should arbitrate. General. you got to well, get a credit. That, that's probably why Eugene Levy is in this movie, because I because he's a Canadian citizen, right? Uh, yes. So yeah. I imagine that. But now here's... here's so the, he has to, you mean? Well, no. I so th- they make him. <laughs> I they think, can call anybody back and be like you gotta do this I think there is Wait, a thing is it? though where you have to do like you do you have to do some sort no, of art really? in like oh, if you still share citizenship you have oh, to do know. some uh, but here's wait the, what's the rule you're saying I thought there was a rule that if you uh, if you are still uh, if you share uh, citizenship if you're still uh, that you have to do something in Canada in the arts of that but I could be totally no, wrong no that's <laughs> not a rule <laughs> That's so crazy. No, but can you imagine being like mandated to go back to uh, like, this, like, like, like to some do. sort of prison? <laughs> right. Like, where, oh, where are you going next month? Oh, I, well, you know, I'm half. I you know, you know, I was born in Canada, so I still have Canadian years. citizenship. So I got to go up and I got to make a terrible kids so movie. So you don't, you don't have to go back to Canada to make a TV show. No, now. but for it, for you to get Canadian funding for a movie, it has to be. Like the ma- the leads in the movie have to be Canadian. Okay. So since you oh, in order to qualify role, for that money, yeah. So they'll try to get people. Yeah. So that's why it was definitely Canadian okay. funded. Well, do you want to hear how much money it made? You said it cost six point five, which you're right about. The opening weekend gross, and this is this was released in theaters. I guess, but listen to the opening weekend gross: seven hundred and six dollars. <laughs> seven hundred and six. That doesn't even wow. seem possible to me. The lifetime gross is three thousand two hundred and thirty-four dollars. Oh, no. Whoa! And kind of that is like seem that's right. like Delgo numbers. <laughs> also, this is one of the. Higher budget movies say, to come out of Canada is in the a past lot decade. Of money. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot of money that I did not see. And, and, where, and, and I was it's gonna written, say, where directed, did they spend and that money? Would well, not on the suit. not on extras, not on the. If you suit? look it up, there's. I mean, yeah. Telefilm is the place that funds movies in Canada. I wonder what they did kick into this because I will tell you. Maybe we tele- are. Telefilm we should investigate. Movie. Or it could have just been he invested his own money, but I don't. That, yeah, the writer director Coney Bear. Uh, his name is uh, Coney Bear 2012. Wilson Coney Bear. <laughs> He's the writer, producer, creator. He also did Shining Time Station. Six um, point five million dollars. There on are this movie. that is kind of fascinating. Of locations. There are no extras. There are no extras in the movie whatsoever, except for the students in the classroom scenes. Well, let me let me ask you this. This is the question that I had before about Canada. On Halloween, they make it like they go out to go to the movies on Halloween, and that doesn't seem like is that a tradition. Maybe? Yeah, is that a thing? Explain yourself, yeah. you yeah, weird that was country. Weird. Yeah, but t- did the movie take place in Canada? That I mean, all I know is that in the supermarket, they never said the word Halloween. Was, though, do you remember they kept on saying October thirty first? Yes, that's true. Well, what does that mean? I then? don't know. I mean, it clearly was Halloween. I mean, I mean, it's not called something different in Canada, is it? <laughs> well, it's October 31st day. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, uh, you know what? If that bummed you out, don't worry, because the director actually managed to make another movie since the recording of this episode. It's called American Hangman. And if you want to listen to the entire episode of Gooby, if you want to watch Gooby, God help you. But uh, and we actually, I think, still even have Gooby shirts in our... Uh, in our T Public store, uh, you can do all the things that you like to do. You can listen to us, uh, you can follow us, you can like us, you can subscribe to us, you can subscribe here, and more importantly, come out if you are in uh, the Chicago, Indianapolis, uh, Detroit, or Ohio area at the end of October because we're going back on the road and we'd love to have you there for Halloween party, costume contest, and some really fun live shows. So always head on over to hdtgm.com for more tickets and information. See you next time on How Did This Get Made? Matinee Monday. Bye for now.